Hey guys, okay, so I came out here hoping to still catch daylight. Why? Because it's easier to talk in the car than to talk and set up the lights and stuff, right? This is the quickest, fastest way to do this. So basically, this is what I want to talk about. I shared, I had posted a short video, it was only about 46 seconds long, and I was showing how literally I get money in the mail, right? I mean, literal money was in the mail. Three separate envelopes had cash money stuffed inside of them. And I had some comments by, from some people asking me, how do I do that? How do I do that? Because I always say money is always in my mailbox. Something I always say. So I think that sometimes it's easier for me to give you examples while I'm telling you what I do than to just kind of tell you what I do. Or just tell you what to do, you know? So I think the first thing, because all that is, it's an extension of manifesting, right? For some reason, money is has always been a little bit easier for me to manifest than a lot of other things in life, right? So as an extension of manifest, you manifest what you believe. You manifest what you are, what you vibrate as, where your vibration is. That's what you manifest. So I would say... The first step in something like this is to just change your language, change your wording. It doesn't hurt anything to say, money is always coming to me in the mail. You know, most people say things like, all I get is bills in the mail. Well, so what if that's your reality? You don't have to give voice to that. You really don't. You get bills in the mail. But isn't it awesome that you have money to pay the bills? You know, little things, making little tweaks, little adjustments to your wording, to your language. And then you can just start saying, money is always coming to me in the mail. I, I get money in the mail. Or I don't get bills in the mail. I get money in the mail. That's what I get. You know? So just start saying it. Just change your words. And your beliefs should then follow. Right? Um, the belief of it may not follow soon or, you know, quick, but it will follow over time. This is why another technique in manifesting is creating affirmations or mantras. Now, see, here's the thing. Because I'm not really a big believer in mantras. Like, I don't really use them in my practice, but I do understand how they work. The idea is, if you say something enough, you will soon believe it. The problem for me with mon mantras or mantras is the fact that sometimes people say things from memory. They say things from repetition. They say things out of habit. But do they really believe it, right? So that's the that's the trick where you can get caught up in. If you say, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. But do you really believe you're beautiful? You know what I mean? Saying it is one thing, but believing it is another thing, right? But in this exercise, you can give yourself the mantra that money always comes to me in the mail, now, what's going to help us to start believing that is we're going to start looking for evidence of that. The evidence can be small, y'all. Take it as small as you can. When you start opening up your mail, look for evidence of money, even if it's not what you have in mind. Meaning that you start this day one, don't expect a dollar in your mailbox by day two. I mean, it could happen. But all I'm saying is we're looking for small evidence. And the reason why we're looking for evidence is so that we can stop believing our affirmations, okay? When we believe and then we vibrate, we raise our vibration to attract that which we believe, that's when we start seeing the physical evidence of a thing. Now, I just so happened to open my mail today. Dag, I actually threw some things away already and I'm now I'm thinking I should have kept it for this exercise, but I didn't. So some of the things I threw away was in my mail, I got a $10 um, coupon for DoorDash, right? That's evidence. That's evidence. If you get a $10 discount, that's $10 saved. That is evidence. And for you, I would say create a list of the evidence of the money in your mailbox. So I would write down one $10 DoorDash coupon that has a value of $10. Plus, it even had more value because it also had free delivery for your first order. Like if you weren't already a DoorDash customer, you get free delivery. Even more value. 
love it. Now, the reason why I didn't keep that is because I personally don't use DoorDash. I really don't. Y'all, yeah, y'all know me. Y'all know I be watching all my coins. So for me, I prefer to just go pick up my food and save that delivery fee, save the, happen to do a tip, save all of that, right? So I don't do DoorDash. So I went ahead and I, um, put that in my shred mail. But for the exercise, I would totally write that down. I would write down discounts you receive, offers you receive, things like that as evidence of money always coming in the mail. Now, I'm going to show you in my case the things that I did keep from money always coming to me in the mail. And this, like I said, I opened this mail up today. So this is from today. The things that I did keep. So I got this flyer in the mail and it's from City Visa. Now basically what this was telling me, because I open all my mail, no matter what you labor it, what you call it, I'm opening it. Be nosy about your mail, y'all. Be nosy. Don't just throw it away and say, oh, da, da. open it. See what's in it. Even when people send you those free address labels for your um, mail, hey, it's a gift. It counts. So what they sent me here from my city prestige credit card is they sent me an offer to sign up to earn five times the points for every dollar I spend. So one dollar now equals five dollars in categories that normally don't get five points. And the categories are grocery stores, drug stores, gas stations, mass transit, and commuter transportation vendors, right? Now this gives you up to 2,500 points until 9 September 30th, 2021. So this is a time sensitive thing and it's a cap. The points are 2,500. Now, I normally use a different credit card for groceries that gives me four times the points. But hey, for this period of time, I can now, if I go to CVS, if I go to Walgreens, if I go to grocery stores, I am now going to use this card. And I actually wrote these notes down on a sticky note so that I can remember, right? Because this is limited. Then I read the back of this offer. And I had to call in and enroll in this, right? I had to... Um, August 15th to enroll in this to, for, to receive this offer. So that's another blessing. The fact that I opened my mail in a timely manner and I was able to do that. Now I read the little fine print. All right, there we go. So I read this fine print, y'all. I am always reading fine print because I want to maximize. I am in the business of maximizing my blessings. I really am. So and you see, I took notes on the fine print. So the fine print is telling me that bridge and tunnel fees and temporary parking fees count as mass transit. Because again, I have to look at what I, what I actually do. So out of these offers, the only things I would actually do would be grocery stores. Then I would do drug stores. I won't do gas stations because I don't have a gas vehicle. However, if I am... No, I don't. Mm, that ain't gonna work. But let's say if I was with somebody who had a gas vehicle and they were getting gas, I would offer to use my card and you can cash at me back for real. I do that, and um, so then I can get those points. And then the mass transit commuter, I needed more information on that. And by reading the fine print, that's where I discovered that okay, not only could you, if you're taking railways like metros and buses, not including Amtrak, it says, and if you're doing br bridges and tunnel fees. And if you're doing temporary parking. So right there, I'm going to move my Easy Pass subscription over to this card. Now, I don't know if the Easy Pass is going to totally count as bridge and tunnel fees. Or would that have to be like something you're physically driving through and you have to stop at the thing and swipe a card? We don't know, but it don't hurt. It doesn't hurt to see. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. And so this was one of the um examples of money coming to me in the mail now if i max this out and actually spend up to 2500 points in that period of amount of in that period of time 2500 points actually equates to about $25 okay but again it is free money in the mail so the other thing that i got in the mail when i opened my mail was this DSW coupon for $30 off of any $49 purchase. Y'all, that is, how much is that? $19? <laughs> that's, 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 all I would have to spend is $19 if I found something for $49 or, you know, $49. But 
anything above $49, I'm getting $30 off. And the reason why this coupon is clutch. It's not because I'm a shopper. I'm not. But I am about to go on a vacation and I do need some things for that vacation. I actually would like some rain boots or some other nice walking shoes or boots or whatever that is good for cold, rainy, wet weather because I'm going to Alaska. So this is dope. Money in the mail. Now my last evidence for the money that came in the mail for me today Let's just show you the back with my signature. This right here. This is another check, y'all. So I got a check for $143.98. Money in the mail. I was not expecting this. And this check is from my mortgage provider, my mortgage lender, whatever you call those people. Um, basically, this was a refund check because I did refinance my house, but I did get a check for $170 last month um, from that process. So now here's another $143.98. And I read the paperwork that came with this and it didn't um, spell out specifics, but I'm imagining maybe this is a escrow overpayment or something to that effect. But again, money it's always coming to me in the mail. And I know money comes in y'all's mailboxes too. Until the next video, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this made sense. Any more questions down below, I will come and answer it in a video. Um, I've been receiving some emails. I'm sorry, guys, for all the emails I'm not getting back to. I'm just kind of super swamped with a lot of things. But I will try to make videos so that I can answer. Because a lot of you have the same questions. So that I can answer, you know as many of your questions as possible um, in a way that's timely for me. So that's it, y'all. I'm Tanisha. This is Fun and Budget. Thank y'all for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment, talk to me, all the good things. Until the next video, y'all. Peace. No, hold on. I just said to Gwen, I have to go home and edit this video. And she's like, which one? I said, oh, no, it's a I got money in the mail video. And she goes, yeah, I, no, got I got the mail. Because <laughs> remember, that's always been our thing. We always get money in the mail. So one check was for $52. And then I got one for $175. And I just got one for like $200 or so. Uh -huh. It's like three <laughs> <laughs>